traveling every time. We have prayer this afternoon at new time. We have prayer every Wednesday afternoon. So what are we doing? You know, we're creating a culture. Too often prayer has become an event. Prayer does not need to be an event. Prayer needs to be deep. Sometimes you have to take a small group to start and really keep praying and be consistent until everything else that needs to be birthed. Yes, yes. Come on, give God Everything is not going to change overnight. Everybody's not going to get on board. But if we keep on staying with it, you know what? There's going to be more accomplished through praying and seeking the face of God than us doing things outside or our own or within our own human life. I'm going to share about five principles. I take about 30 minutes most. And um, I want to talk about five things that are supposed to happen in prayer. Not as many things are supposed to happen in prayer. But I want to share five principles I think be meaningful to us tonight. I want to ask you to Bible with me to the book of Matthew chapter. Matthew chapter 21 and verse number 10 through verse 14. Book of St. Matthew chapter 21. All right. If you have your Bibles, read with me, please. Verse 10. Let's read together verse 10. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? I'm take it off. And this is a very powerful passage of scripture. Um, the Bible says Jesus came in and he looked at the what was happening in the house. Oh, this is where all this was happening. All this, all these transactions, all these things were going on in the house of God. And Jesus came and he had to be, he began to drive all those things out of the house. He began to drive out the business, the, the money changers, all the schemes and scams that were going on. And the question. Um, but we have to ask is that before we can get a manifestation of God, what are, what are some of the things that God needs to drive out of your life? What, what needs to be driven out of your life? Because in order for some things to manifest in your life, some things need to go out. Now, notice that Jesus didn't talk them out. He didn't ask them out. Bob said he drove them out. There's some things in your life that need to be driven out. What are those things? There's some things in our life that need to be, in order for faith to be manifested in us, in order for the Word of God to be made manifest in us, in order for miracles to be made manifest in us, there's some things that need to be driven out. Some mannerisms, some attitudes, some belief systems, some religion, some, some bad experiences, some bad ideology, some bad concepts, some bad paradigms. There are things that the Spirit of God needs to drive out in order for Him to manifest Himself. Hallelujah. Now, we looked at the natural temple, how He drove them out of the temple, and um, after which, after he drove them out of the temple, the next thing that happened was Jesus had to deal with the system that had taken over the temple that everyone seemed to be comfortable with. No one really challenged it. No one really dealt with it. It just became a part of the status quo. This is how things are done. The house of God was a place where they came. It was supposed to be a place of prayer, but it became a place for people coming to meet people, people coming to transact business, people coming to do different things. And it became something that was never intended for it to be. And what the Lord had to do, he had to come and start dealing with all that stuff. Now, I know that we can come to church and we can have uh, cafe night, we can do bowling night, we can do movie night. But we got to make sure that we understand that this is the house of God. This is a house of prayer. And if you were having a dinner, we're having fellowship, folks to pack this place out to have a dinner, folks to pack this out to have some activity. But Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Before we do anything else, this house needs to be established as a house of prayer. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen in this place. Amen. So he begins to drive out this system. It's a system that developed itself in the house of God. Um, then notice what happens. Notice what begins to happen after he drives out the people that were doing all this stuff. And uh, verse number, verse 14. Read it, please. Notice that before he began to manifest his works, his power, he had to deal with the system that was in place. You can't have the power of God healing the blind and the lame when, his, when the respect is lost for the house of God. You can't have the glory of God be manifest when the house of God has become like a playground, like a basketball court. This is Jesus. This is this, Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. This is not, this is not a playground. This is where, 
This is where God comes to be his people. This is where people are delivered. It was so powerful about the house of God. A person can be dying of a sickness and a disease and no doctor can help them. And they can come in the midst of this place and find healing and deliverance that they can't find in Einstein or Hunter Bureau Medical Center. going through all type of psychotherapy and they're messed up in their head. Going from doctor to doctor and therapist to therapist can come to this place and find healing and deliverance for their mind that they can't find on some medication that's not going to mess them up even more. Somebody could be so hurt and lost and broken on drugs and alcohol, but they can come into the house of God and experience the power in the mind of God and years of destructive and dysfunctional behaviors can be broken in a moment because of the power of God. That's the kind of house I want to belong to. That's the kind of church I want to be a part of. And I want to get our certain people to open up their mouth and give God some praise. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lord of God. They, they couldn't find a way. So that tells me that if the church is not what it's supposed to be, then the people who need to make their way there can't find their place because there's too many other things happening that's become, that's created a blockage and a hindrance. Flesh is manifesting itself. Dysfunctional behavior manifesting itself. Sin manifesting Let me tell you something when the church begins to pray. Sin cannot stay in this atmosphere. Sin. You can't be standing up and coming to the house of God and I find out what is happening from the church. In Jesus' name. So they began to make their way to the house of God. Things begin to move. Things begin to move. Now the blind, the lame, and those that needed ministry began to find their place. Couldn't find their place before. Because the place that where they should come to find deliverance became preoccupied with all these different things. Hallelujah. And they were changing. The Bible says they were, they were money changers. In other words, what they were doing, I call the church black market. You know, I'm going to give you this, you give me that. Um, you know, I'm going to tell on you, you don't tell on me. It's a black market where people exchange information on each other. People that just, oh, I'm not going to help in this place. Yeah, every, every church has this black market. You can't tell me nothing about what I'm doing because I know what you did. It's called a church's black market. We're exchanging information. But we have to get all that nonsense out of the house of God so that the place that can be done can be a place of meeting and deliverance and the spirit and the power. My God, God is longing to manifest himself in his house. Five things of God, folks. Um, first thing that our prayer is designed to do in this time of intercession is that the first thing that it is designed to do is to break demonic strongholds. Somebody say break demonic strongholds. A stronghold is not necessarily atmospheric as much as it is mental. Hear me? It is the mental strongholds that creates the atmosphere. I say it again, a stronghold is something that is, is a hold upon the mind more so than a hold upon the atmosphere. Why? Because if the atmosphere is locked up, nothing is moving, we can get the right song, the right note, the right sound, and we can all begin to make some noise and shout hallelujah, and we can break the atmosphere. We can break the atmosphere, but never break it in our minds. We can, we can sing to the power of the Lord come down and break the atmosphere. So the stronghold is not necessarily the atmosphere, the stronghold is in the mindset. Because if you can break the atmosphere, and after which you go back to the same mindset that you used to have. I'm not making sense to somebody. It's the same thing like being in the service. We can be in prayer for 21 more days, and folks are praying. And as soon as you stop doing that, they go right back to doing what they did before. Because guess what? They were into breaking atmospheres, but never broke their mindset. So the same people are found again Wednesday night doing the same thing. Because the people that uh, came during the times of intercession never changed their mindset. And so as a result of that, you only contribute to the atmosphere 
But what is supposed to happen is that when we begin to pray, we pray until we break strongholds upon ourselves. Nothing changes in your life until your mind changes. God had an assignment for him. And he could be. It was possible he didn't have time to, you know, go to the airport and get a ticket and get a visa and, and get the right donkey and get water and get camels together. God was pouring to where he needs to be. Tell you something. I'm just to bed myself. The other thing that prayer and consecration does is it accelerates the prophetic word of your life. Say it with me, it accelerates the prophetic word of my life. I'm gonna tell you something. Many of you hear prophetic words over and over again. And you say, God, where is it? Where is it? Where? You're not supposed to be. You're not supposed to be standing up saying, where is it? You're supposed to be praying towards it. See, because if you're not in the right frame of mind, you're not even going to connect with it. It won't even make sense to you because you're trying to understand a spiritual revelation based upon your present location. And you are not the person that's going to receive it, that's going to fulfill it. In other words, Jacob received the prophecy I mean, Israel received, Jacob received the prophecy, but Israel fulfilled the manifestation. Jacob and Israel are the same person, but Jacob had to go through a transition to Israel, and the promise was fulfilled by the of myself. Third thing that prayer does, well, I didn't finish the acceleration part. Let me go back to that. Because there are things that are on hold in your life not on purpose. What do I mean by that? In other words, the things you're waiting for, but you're not supposed to wait for them. It's supposed to be, a, this, this should have been happening much faster. But you haven't shifted the, the, the divine system to cause it to come to you. Am I making sense? Yeah, yeah. In other words, you can, you, can, you can be believing God for something. God gave you a word, and you're standing there waiting for it. And God is saying, I, want, I need your spirit to change because the person that received that word is not the person that's going to fulfill it. There are some divine transitions that must take place in your spirit because the person you are is not even in a place to receive what you heard. God only gave you that word to get your faith stirred up. Uh huh. So you begin to move towards that thing. So God says, you know what? When God tells you a promise, it's just an engagement ring. It's not a marriage yet. It's to let you know that if you stay faithful and you keep moving towards me, I'm going to put the covenant ring on your finger and bring it in the fullness of what I promised you. You can break an engagement, yes. but it takes a lot of people work to break a marriage. Come on. Come on. That's right. You can walk away from an engagement. You can throw the ring on the table and walk away. But you can't take off your wedding band and walk away because you are still married. 